So now let's start with drawing free body diagrams. And we have to understand this from Newton's second law of motion. Okay. And this is the premise for it. So, um, this part F net equals M a is the formula. We're going to use all of unit two. All of unit two is going to be preface on this. And we're going to spend a lot of time on this topic because this is really big. The first part we want to understand is this portion, the F net. We're going to ignore the right side. The right side is not too difficult. We covered this a lot or at least the acceleration portion in kinematics. So we're going to focus a lot on this lesson on calculating the F net. Okay. We got to understand this portion. So free body diagram, this is a critical, critical skill. You have to know for AP physics one and AP physics C, um, AP physics two. This is a core foundational skill. You do need to know this for basically the rest of AP physics. If you cannot get this skill down correctly, it's going to impact your ability to do anything else for the rest of AP physics. Okay. So this is super, super critical, you know, and this is how we actually apply Newton's laws of motion, especially the second and third law. Okay. So here are the basics. We're going to start off with simple free body diagram. So every force is caused by another object and each object has a different rule. Okay. The free body diagram is about drawing the direction of every force that's acting on an object. Okay. So if you have an object, like say, for example, my body is subject to multiple forces that are happening at the same time. And the goal of the free body diagram is to identify all of the forces that are acting on you and to draw it in, in, in the arrow direction. Remember forces have a direction and a magnitude. So the key part of the free body diagram is to draw the direction of all the forces that are acting. It's primarily direction. The magnitude comes about when we are doing calculations. But initially, the free body diagram is only about the direction of all the forces that we're talking about acting on you. And so there's going to be three types of forces we're going to be talking initially. There's going to be more forces as we progress through the unit, but we're going to start with simple ones so that's easy to draw it. So first we have gravity. Gravity acts caused by planets uh, like near the Earth's surface, things like that, normal force and tension force. And let's talk about the rules for each of them. So gravitational force caused by a large mass or planet. Technically, anything with mass causes gravity, but gravity is generally a pretty weak force that it requires a huge amount of mass, a huge amount of stuff, matter, in order to cause gravity. So something like the moon and the earth can create gravity. My pen here can create gravity, but it's such a tiny amount, we would generally ignore it. So we usually only consider gravitational forces from a large mass or planet, unless the question asks you to think about like, the gravity from a very, very small object. The direction is towards the center of the planet, which is usually downward. If I'm on the surf, like if this is the surface of the earth, this is the earth here, and I'm standing here. Okay. Then the center of the earth is way, way, way down here. So generally it's downward, usually downward. However, if I were to talk about like the earth like this, and I were standing here, if I were to zoom out and imagine I were not to scale. I'm not like a giant like this. Okay. Then the force of gravity is going to point towards the center of the earth. So it's going to point like that, right? So this would be the direction and we'll denote it with an F F G to say force of gravity. It will point towards the center of the object that is causing the gravity. So if I have multiple planets here and I have an object right here, it's going to feel a force towards this center here and a force towards this planet as well. Okay, so I have two forces, force of gravity from this guy and this guy. The rule is it points towards the center of the planet or giant mass or whatever. Okay, now as a special note for mechanics, AP Physics 1 or AP Physics C mechanics, this is the only force that can act without physical contact. No other force we're going to talk about in AP Physics 1 or in, me in mechanics in general is a force that acts without contact. When we get to E and M, things like that, there are forces, other forces that can act without contact, but the gravity is the only one that is going to act without physical contact in the context of mechanics. Every other force requires physical contact. Okay. And that's, that's super important because that will help you identify all the forces that are acting on an object. The normal force is caused by any object or surface that is in physical contact. Okay. So if anything that's touching it, okay, like a surface will have an outward force away perpendicular to the surface. So for example, me standing on a table, okay, I'm touching, I'm physically touching this table here. It will exert a force 
outward and perpendicular away from this surface. Now, the reason we say normal, normal doesn't mean regular. Normal has a specific mathematical term. It means at a right angle. Normal means 90 degrees, so, okay, like it's perpendicular. So this angle, angle, this vector, this force vector is perpendicular to the surface away from that surface. Okay, it's not this way, this would be wrong. Pulling it downward would be like the ground is sucking me in and that's not what's happening. Gravity is pulling me down, but the, the surface itself is pushing upward on me, okay, on this. So any object that has physical contact, any surface, it will exert a surface, a force perpendicular to that surface away from that surface, okay? The last force we talk about is tension is caused by a rope or a string. And this is kind of tricky, but we're just gonna, this is a model, technically tension force is actually a very complicated force. For simplicity, these are the rules we're gonna follow. It's caused by any rope or string and the direction is the, the rope or string away from the object. So the thing about, the thing about, um, the thing about tension forces, and I, I'm gonna go full video for this just so you can kind of see what's, what I'm talking about here, is let's say I, I tie this cable here and it's, it's tied to this pen, okay? And I pull this way. Notice that like I can pull it to the right with a cable here, right? But I can't push it. When I push it, it doesn't happen. So, so ropes can only pull away from an object. So imagine it's fastened here, right? And so I'm pulling it to the right. So the direction of the tension force is going to be the direction that the rope is going, and it's going to be away from the object, okay? So any, any, if there's a rope or string touching it, then it's going to, any rope or string in contact with the object, the direction of the force, is the tension force is going to be away from the object, okay? And there's a lot of rules. Where, this is where it's going to take a bit of practice, okay? So how to draw free body diagrams. We always start with gravity. Gravity is always existing as long as you're near a surface of a planet. Like if you're in deep space, then there's not going to be any gravity. It's caused by an Earth, but it's always pointing down towards the center of the Earth. Most of the time, we're talking about scenarios near the Earth. All other forces require physical contact, okay? Other than gravity, right? As we talked about. So what we do is we examine what else is touching the object. And if it's a surface, then the normal force pushes outward from the surface. If it's a tension force, if it's a rope, then a tension force is from a rope and always pulls in the direction that the rope is going, okay? Away from the object. So let's do some examples here, because this is a bit tricky. So block A is being suspended by the ceiling from the ceiling by a rope. Draw a free body diagram. So we're gonna put a dot. The way we draw free body diagrams, put a dot to represent the object. Okay, it doesn't matter the shape of this object, you just put a dot here. And let's go through our process. So we're gonna draw gravity, act is pulling downward on it. We'll call it FG here. Okay, so it's gravity, it's pulling downward towards the center of the earth. Then you look at block A and see what's touching it. Uh there's a rope touching it right here. It's being suspended from the ceiling by a rope. There's a rope touching it. That then pulls in the direction of the rope, right? It's away from the object in the direction of the rope. And we can call this, sometimes I'll put T, or you can denote it with an F with a subscript T. There's nothing else touching the object, so we are done with that free body diagram, okay? Simple. All right, let's look at um, another. So block A is being pushed to the right by external force F. Assume there's no friction between the blocks. So there's a surface here, by the way. So it's sitting on a table or something on a ground or whatever. Draw free body diagrams for blocks A and B. Note the force pairs from Newton's third law. Actually, we're gonna ignore this part right here. We're gonna, we haven't talked about Newton's third law. That's in a different lesson, so we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's look at block A. Okay, so this is block A. We're gonna do a free body diagram block A. So we're gonna start with gravity. It's a force of gravity. And we're gonna put A because it's acting on block A because I'm gonna do a separate free body diagram for block B. So we might want a different label just to not confuse which is which, All right? So we have force of gravity A is pulling down. Now what's touching it? Well, the ground is touching it. That exerts a normal force perpendicular to that surface, right? So there's a normal force from the ground on A. Okay, it's caused by the ground on A. What else is touching it? We have this arrow here. This is an external force F, this, this, this is called F. So it's pointing to the right, it's touching it. We don't know what's causing that touching, but it's just, and the problem is telling you it's there, so it's caused by something that's touching it. Okay, so there's some external force F pointing to the right there. And it, this one, they're telling you the direction, so that's pretty straightforward. 
What else is touching block A? Well, block B is touching it, and it's a surface, right? It's not a rope, so it's a surface. So it exerts a force perpendicular to the surface away from the surface. The surface is B, and so that normal force is perpendicular to that surface, right? It makes a right angle to that surface and away from it. So here we're going to have a force from a normal force from block B here. Okay, and that's a normal force. And that's everything that's touching block A. So we've added the complexity. That's why we systematically go through everything that's touching it to draw a free body diagram, okay? Now let's look at block B here, okay? So let's erase these. Let's look at what's touching block B, okay? Well, actually, first let's start with gravity. So gravity is acting downward on block B. It's a gravity acting on block B. So that's the first thing we do. Then we look at what's touching it. Well, the ground is touching it. So it exerts a normal force perpendicular to that surface, okay? So it's a normal force from the ground on B, okay? And then what else is touching it? Well, block A is touching it over here, right? And that's a surface relative to block B. This surface is here on the left. And it's pushing away from block A, away from, because block A is causing this is that surface is causing this force away from block A, which means the force would be to the right. Because we're doing a free body diagram of block B, this is the normal force from A. Okay, see that? Now, you might think, well, no, there's nothing else touching it. So there's no other forces. You might think like, but there's this external force here, but the external force is not touching block B. So it's not acting on block B. So we are done with the free body diagram of block B. We are only examining what is, other than gravity, every other force has to be caused by something that is physically touching the block. That's super important because a lot of people make a mistake in adding in. They say, well, there's this external force here, but it's not touching block B. It's not acting on block B. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. So here, again, there's a surface here. Block A is connected to block B by a rope. Block A is being pulled to the left with another rope. Draw the free body diagrams for blocks A and B. Okay, so... Free body block A. All right, again, we start with gravity. Okay, it's acting downward towards the center of the earth. What's touching it? Well, we have a we have another rope here. We have a rope here. We'll call this we'll call this rope T1. Every rope you attach a name to it. So we'll call this rope T2. The tension, it refers to the tension in that rope. That's just a labeling. Okay. So for A, it's not telling you direction, it's just labeling it. So block A, we have T1 pulling to the left. Right, because it's touching it right here. A, we have a, the another rope touching it here. That's pulling it to the right because it pulls in the direction of the rope. Remember, this rope cannot push on A. Cannot push it to the left. It's got to pull on it to the right. Okay, what else is touching it? Well, we have a surface from the ground, so that's a normal. That's a perpendicular force. Normal force on from the ground on A. Okay. And that's it. That's everything that's touching block A. So we are done with the forces acting on block A. We're done with the free body diagram of A. Let's look at block B here. Okay. So start with gravity. I always have you do start with gravity. Force of gravity on B. Examine what is touching block B. We have a rope. T2 is touching block B right here. And it can only pull it in the direction away from the object. That's the rule. So I think like, Alan, how come T2 is pointed to the right here and pointing to the left here? Well, from the perspective of point A, it is pointing to the right. Away from block A would be to the right, but away from block B would be pointing to the left. Okay, that's the rule. What else is touching it? We have a surface here. Okay, so there's a normal force from the ground acting on there. Now, a lot of people get really sloppy with this and always put these normal forces here. They have to be caused by physical contact. And so these are sitting on the ground, sitting on a surface. That's causing a normal force. If you're up in the air, there's no normal force. Notice on this one, we didn't draw a normal force, right? Because it's not touching the ground, okay? So that's an important, important thing to recognize when that normal force exists is because it's in physical contact with the surface there. Okay, let's do one more example here. So if block A, this is a little bit tricky. So first, let's draw gravity pointing down. And because there's no other objects, I don't have to put the A. You can put the A if you want. It's fine. Okay, it's attached by a rope to a pulley. Now, what's touching it? Well, we got a rope here. Call it T. And it's pull, It's it's horizontal rope. 
right? So it's pointing in the direction that the rope is drawn in the picture, right? The picture is horizontal rope, so the tension's horizontal. Then what's touching the surface? All right, touching, what else is touching it is this here. What's perpendicular to this surface is at an angle here. It's a little bit tricky, right? Again, perpendicular to the surface means it's gonna be an angle because the surface is not horizontal, it's at an angle. So that means that normal force has to be at an angle like this. Oh, this is gonna remind you, we're gonna do some vector decomposition just like we did in projectile motion, right? So the normal force perpendicular to that surface in that direction like that, right? And it makes a right angle to that inclined surface. Nothing else is touching it, so we're done. Okay, and so that's how we draw free body diagram. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in their AP classes.